Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Heapy Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Carlo Navas. And with me today, we have our 2K coach, co-founder of StreamBeat, Frankie G. I am still mad at the Sacramento Kings, uh, 17 years after the fact that they drafted Francisco Garcia and didn't let him slide to Miami. Because I've always just wanted a Garcia jersey without having to pay for my name. Yeah. It, it was so convenient. He has my name. He's actually from the same town as my uh, my dad's family. So oh, really? We, we might be related. That's cool. I didn't know that. Shout out to that. Yeah, it, we might be cousins. And he almost gave me the heat. I'm, I'm just looking it up randomly. Kings. I don't know why fuck I was the looking at the uh, it's always draft. It's always fuck the Kings on here. Odd way to start uh, a podcast in which the Heat close out a series in five games, as they, as they always do. Uh, Kenny, uh, as you can see to my right, uh, is having technical difficulties, and uh, he'll be joining us at some point. Uh, I don't know when, but you know we just put his Twitter avi as a reminder that he's here with us in spirit. So hopefully, Kenny can join us uh, soon. Frankie, tons to get he's into indeed. from that game. Uh, it was a cesarean section of a basketball game. It was truly one of. I went to the game. It was one of the worst sporting events I've been to in the sense of like the on court product was horrible. Um, but there were a couple of things that were interesting about that game. And I just want to kind of, you know, before we kind of move on to who the Heat are going to play in, in the next round, I just want to kind of get into what trends are happening with this team, what happened in that game five, and what can we look going forward? So obviously, you know, okay, Christian says in chat, I think Kenny's internet is frozen. Um, Frankie, I think the most important thing from that game, there are two things that I, I think we should take away most importantly. One, Victor Oladipo is just good right he's getting to the rim he has you know downhill gravity and zip uh the first the step years. is there he's good and you know i made fun of people for thinking that a 12th man would make a difference and i was wrong listen we can all laugh at ourselves for being wrong you know i was i wanted to call that out you could you should have no but i a 100 percent wasn't sure if you were talking about depot or yurt <laughs> yes because because with bam's struggles before that i could 100 percent believe yurt fans going on about yurt could help the team more so i guess for me you know i think oladipo has some issues um you know offensively that we can talk about later uh, as kenny rejoins us and hopefully he's here to stay this time um we'll we'll see about that but yeah yeah frankie um you know for me you know he his impact was the most important part the fact that he looked good um was important what's up kenny what's up man what's going on we're back baby we're back just asking frankie about what he thought about vic you know the the downhill the first step all that stuff yeah man man i thought when when we got victor oladipo last year um my uh most of my excitement you know obviously i've been a fan of victor oladipo since he was in college um but i i also was just excited for the two-way aspect of having that kind of guard um, and obviously, in the past year, we've at, Gabe Vincent has become a two-way guard. Max Struess has become a two-way player. Caleb Martin is a two-way player. They got Kyle Lowry. Uh, they've added a, a plentiful of two-way players, especially at the guard spot. Uh, but you know, Vic has a little bit of everything. He's got the ball handling. He's got the the first step, like you mentioned. He's got the athleticism. He's a, a bigger and stronger than Gabe. Uh, which helps him when playing bigger guards. The lawn right was no longer a problem as soon as Victor Oladipo started playing, and which excites me because in the, in the next couple of series they're going to have James, either James Harden, a Drew Holiday. Uh, I don't think James Harden is going to make it to the next round, but uh, <laughs> they're going to have to face a Drew Harden or a Marcus Smart in the finals in the Eastern Conference Finals. And those guys have have strength. They're going to bully their way to the paint. Uh, we saw in the finals, Drew was. Making his having his way with Cameron Payne, with Chris Paul, just bodying guys. And Vic brings an element of ball handling as well as, as strength that we didn't really have at the at the guard spot. Uh, Kyle obviously brings that, but once Kyle sits down, um, 
and uh, it, it was missing. And Kyle's obviously missed the last couple of games. So I've, I've just been excited. Vic's fit in. He's not hijacking the offense. He's picking his spots. He's getting others involved. And uh, that boost, especially with Martin uh, being not 100%, you know, you, he's, he's not hundred percent. Yeah. Um, he doesn't look the same. He he can help you in spurts, but nowhere near to how he looked in the in the regular season. So I think they really have benefited from Depot's uh, uh, games and his talents the last couple games. And I, I I can't imagine him losing a spot in the rotation. Kenny, I think the important thing with Depot is how is he going to look next to Bam and Jimmy together. Because that's mm-hmm. going to be a lot of what they, you know, that's going to be a lot of their minutes, right? Those guys are going to play 40 plus minutes and Depot has to be able to survive minutes with both of them together. How do you yeah. see that going? You know, the three point shot isn't a thing that I think any of us can reliably count on from either him or Jimmy. I think that's unfair. That's not the kind of guys they are. So I'm not trying to rain on a parade or anything, but I just want your like your thoughts as we kind of break down what we're gonna look going forward. I you know, we should be more celebratory today, but like it's mm-hmm. just it, there are things that I'm curious about. I think Kenny's gone. I think I think we've lost Kenny. Fucking Christ, man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um so what he does bring in that lineup is Okay, I think I think Kenny's internet today is not cooperating um, so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I'll put people behind the curtain. Like I'm like I've been over the jokes a while ago. It's really fucking annoying at this point having to deal with it. Like it gets in the way of what I want to do. But whatever, I'm here now. I'm probably gonna make this point and leave. I don't want to deal with that shit. But Oladipo is interesting because he can um get to the best whenever he want, like I was saying, collapse the defense. And while Jimmy and Bam aren't the shooting threats you may want them to be, you see Bam in the ducker spot getting those opportunities when Victor Oladipo is there. You see Jimmy not having to handle the ball as much. And so you see the what the penetration of Victor Oladipo does. And what I do like about him, like Frankie alluded to the defense, well, the strength on a defensive end, but on the offensive end, if you notice every time he drives, he takes a hit and the defender bounces off him and then he's in, and then he's at the basket. And so can, Yeah, I agree one hundred percent with that's not a way you can um the other thing that I think him. I thought Polterghost in chat uh made a good point about this that Oladipo is the fastest guy with the ball on the team. That is a hundred percent true. And they yeah. just have I mean, guys, we've talked about this all year. They have no zip, right? I mean, Kyle can get them up the floor, but Kyle gets them up the floor through the air, right? Yeah. Not, not what you know, not with the ball on the floor, right? This is not like a maxi, yeah. you know, who's going to run the ball up. So, I think that element's good, and I don't want to talk too much about what what Depot can't do because today is a celebratory day. Let's talk about what he can do, which is you know, be a disruptor defensively. You know, gets up pretty high. I I think their rebounding, you know, was a little eh yesterday, but a part of that was having to play way smaller lineups. Uh, they just decided that Deadman was not an answer for them. Uh, he played spot minutes, and I imagine a lot of that was because PJ was in foul trouble. We could talk about the ramifications of going that in other series going forward. But, you know, I thought Frankie Depot gave him lift, you know, rebounding, uh, just active, you know, as a playmaker, as a ball handler, it was screening, just really everything you want was always moving, you know. And I think being at the game, it's, you know, I was at the, I was at the arena last night. And you watch Trey Young, and as soon as Trey Young runs in action, he doesn't move. He just stands around and he waits for the ball back, not unlike James Harden. And he's either going to shoot the ball at the end of the shot clock or he's going to like make a move. Depot, as soon as he gets off the ball, it's get off and go. It's screen, it's cut, it's move, it's go baseline to baseline. All that stuff, Frankie. And to me, that's important when you're not a shooter. And with all the other stuff he provides to you, you know, you can't, you're right, you can't not have him in the rotation. And and it's also like you mentioned his rebounding, but his his IQ. Uh, there was a play in Game Four um, that, and it was the uh, back breaking sequence in, in the fourth quarter. I think it was uh, where the Heat got like three straight offensive rebounds, and it ended with a Bam and one. Uh, but that that possession started with Jimmy trying to isolate. Oh, it was uh, it the first shot went with Jimmy trying to isolate, and uh, t- uh, on the block told Depot to cut through. And what the Hawks had been doing. As soon as somebody cuts through that guy, his bandit will just stay there, 
plant himself on the on the strong side and and oversell and, and make Di- Jimmy take a tough shot. So instead of cutting through, as soon as the shot came was going up, Depot cuts back to the strong side and the ball goes right to him. And then we know, you know, a couple of missed shots after that and, and a bam uh, three point play and ends it. But it's just those little things that the Heat weren't doing because uh, of for whatever reason. But it's just that IQ that, you know, you can't really uh, teach all the time. Um, just that awareness to have the presence of mind of like, hey, my, I'm, there's going to be an open spot right here. Let me go try to get this ball. And, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of guys uh, like Caleb, you know, Strews, Gabe, they're they're going to fall in line because they know they have to for, to for playing time. Depot's gonna do what he's supposed to do because he's he's a veteran. He he's a smart player, um, and he helps out like that. And and there's an other sequences. Game four, the 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 layup he got when there was six seconds left on the shot clock, he got the ball three quarters court and got to the rim and got a layup. Like nobody else on the team can yeah, do that. Nobody. He and he's so quick with the ball that. And like I said, we um you know all year we've talked about you know if they have a downhill presence, like a legitimate guy who can manufacture points, especially I think Frankie when teams switch and yeah. he has that first step is still devastating. He doesn't need a screen. Does he can he, he's blowing by guys. He's rejecting screens. He's using screens. Like he, he has a little bit of everything and he, he still looks really good. Yeah. Um, obviously the shot's not falling the way we want it, but he's, he's hit a couple of mid range shot. He's hit some step backs. He can, he can, uh, catch and shoot. And uh, like, you have to respect it. It's not, you know, Max Struess or any shooter like that, but it's, it's a respectable shot. Especially when they can run Frankie. Yeah. And in the corners too, like you can stick him in the corner and he's, he can hit that shot and he can attack a closeout, obviously. And uh, and the running, yeah, like that adds an element. Like I, I was thinking back to the uh, finals uh, in the bubble when, when as soon as Derek Jones ran out of the rotation, they had no athleticism, they had no yeah. fast break, they had no easy buckets. Uh, Goran could could do it, and then he got hurt. Uh, Bam and, and was the other won. guy who gave yeah, him. but but Bam needs the pass, yeah. like like we talked about. And now Depot is their first guy who can give them fast break points uh, by himself. Uh, and and it's so good because because they're they have transition weapons now they have multiple transition and weapons they're they're already buckets. a good transition team you know yeah like on the year I think they were third in transition offense yeah but it, it's not it was never like uh you know blow by athleticism it was we we poke the ball out and somebody leaks out yeah, and yeah, yeah. Didn't get a layup a lot of charity it's making. yeah exactly um now we have somebody who could steal it and go coast to coast. He, you saw those plays he made yesterday, like diving on the floor. Like it should, that's that's it. I mean, that's what it, his body's preserved. You know, as I was scared every fucking time. He did oh, that. bro, that but that place. You know how the, I mean, I was there. Like that place gets so fucking hyped whenever somebody does some shit like that. It goes that fucking building loves a charge and they love that. I, did they take? They didn't even think they took a charge yesterday. It's kind of weird. Um, I can live again. Says not gonna lie, G. You come off as a hater. It's Depot's ninth or tenth game. Just vibe. You're the same way when it came to Max earlier in the season. Uh, yeah, I don't want. That's why I said I don't want to talk about what he can't do. I think that's totally fair criticism, especially with Max. Um, I I'm a little more, you know, you got to show me before yeah. I buy in. I'm a little more reserved in that, and I'll admit it. You know, I'll I'll admit when I'm wrong. I'll admit when my like faults and like seeing the game. You know, like <laughs> as my camera goes out. Uh, shout out to the pod audience who doesn't know that, but you know, I I was and I think Hassan taught me a lesson. Right, because like I saw Hassan for like five minutes, and I was like, "Yeah, that guy," right? And I maybe maybe it's an overcorrection, um, but I'm a little more reserved when it comes to guys. I was like that. Like if you guys listen to the pod, I was like that with Jay Crowder as well. I was like, I don't know about this shooting sustainability, all that, you know. So I'm trying to be better at that, you know. Chat, you hold me accountable, but you know it is what it is. But Depot, you know, today's not to hate. Today is to celebrate this guy who had a a really horrible, horrific injury. And really worked his way back, got to the place that he wanted to be. I don't think that's talked about enough. And I like when Tiff brings it up, Frankie, that, you know, get people who want to be here. And that dude wanted to be here. You know, Miami being able to get him for the minimum is huge. They get, you know, you know, we could talk about Duncan a little bit and how he just hasn't lived up to the contract at all, you know, at, at least one season in. And how they've gotten so much production from Caleb on a two way, Gabe on a minimum. 
you know, Yurt on a minimum, Vince um, Depot on a minimum, uh, all these guys, you know, Struess, that <laughs> Deadman, you're Deadman, you know, you're all these guys, right? They're just getting so much production for guys that are making peanuts. And that's huge, right? When, when you, you know, when you have money allocated, like so heavily at the top. So guy like Depot, you know, making the sacrifice to take the less money and be here. I'm sure that's somebody, you know, I'm sure he could have, I don't know. You never know. I mean, it was obviously a good situation for him and he wanted to be here, but, um, but it is what, yeah, I, I'm just, I don't want to hate. I love him. He's great. That building was so happy for him and you can't not be happy for that guy with the way that he left his, his heart on the floor. No, and, and I, I, when he played well in game four without really like scoring a bunch of points, just doing little things, I thought of you, first of all, you know, because you're a hater. Yeah. Uh, but second of all, because it, it was kind of a, a Kyle Lowry game. Like he w- yeah. impacted the game beyond the box score. He made little plays, uh, wasn't a negative uh, on either end, just fit in and, and did all the right things that you were supposed to do. And uh, the Heat obviously missed that with, with Kyle being out. And these last two games, like, like you know, I don't, I don't expect Depot to be in the rotation and, and score averaging 20, but I do ex- expect him to contribute on both ends. Like, he's going to grab charges. He's going to get steals, deflections, blocked. Uh, he's going to help rotations. He's going to be on point on, those end, on that end. He's going to be able to guard on the ball. And at a point of attack, he's going to be able to guard up inside. Like, he, he's got that athleticism and that strength. Uh, offensively, I don't expect too much from him because I expect a lot of Kyle and, and Jimmy and and uh, uh, to t- kind of take the reins when Kyle's back when, when they're both healthy. Um, but he's definitely shown that he can fit in and not be in the way, uh, especially in game four when he was contributing with with Jimmy and Bam on the floor, which was one of my biggest question marks. Yeah. The other thing with with him is I wonder how they're going to because we haven't seen the rotation, you know, how they're going to look with Lowry. Right, because yeah. that that changes a lot too. So how are they gonna? I don't think Gabe should lose minutes. I think right. especially I if agree. they play the Sixers, you know, he's gonna be a huge weapon for them in any matchup against Tyrese Maxey. You know, that's gonna be a, a really important key to what they do, especially because and and Harden as well. You know, I think you know he's gonna be a a, huge, a big time defender on on Harden, and then when they get to Milwaukee as well, I, I think that he's gonna matter as a just as, as a shooter. Uh, the way that Milwaukee plays defense and defends and all that. So, you know, he's going to be critical in those. I just want to know how they're going to play this. You know, I don't want them to play more three guard lineups. And right. I guess this kind of bleeds into the next point about the, the Deadman uh, element of their rotation. Um, I feel like we're so fucking like business. Like, okay, we won this series. We got to look at the impact. It's, I mean, the Hawks don't like th- that was not a playoff series. That was that was an extension of the regular season. That team fucking sucks. Gee, what are you talking about? My timeline told me this was a play-in powerhouse. Play-in powerhouse. It's it's Frankie, I can't even like bring myself to like openly like ah, it's the Hawks, dude. I'm not out here taking the Hawks. Like they're the fucking Hawks. Like you were a 9 seed. The the Trey Young didn't even make it interesting. That dude just sucked. I was I was laughing when I was listening to the Hangover Time and you were saying like what like you were asking everybody if they were scared. I really was not afraid of the Atlanta Hawks with no Jimmy or Kyle playing. Yeah, like that team is like I my biggest fear when playing like a, a team like that was just that they would steal a game and then we would get hurt in Game Five. Somebody with key would get hurt in Game Five. That's kind of what happened. Miss, no, no, but like have to miss extended time, yeah. like not. Well, we Not don't we don't know with Jimmy yet. I mean, uh, I you know we don't know. I mean, we're assuming. Yeah. We're assuming. We're hoping. Yeah. They but, they say a lot of stuff that has turned out like you know the the heat about injuries that turned out not to be true. Six to eight weeks. I was literally thinking that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> literally. Um, but we have Yimmy Butler, so that's it. We're good. We're we're fine. We're, we're fine. all we're all good. Um, um, but no, I I do want to get to the 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 kind of small ball element to this as well because. They really leaned into no PJ, uh, the, no Deadman and PJ at five. And I, I don't know if that was an Atlanta specific adjustment because the Deadman minutes, again, not that they became untenable. They were minus like one and a half for the series for 100 possessions. Not good, uh, but they were plus 20 with him off. 
they were so good when they were small. And part of that is, you know, you're given a versatility to just switch one through five. You know, Trey playing against the drop is really the only time he looked remotely comfortable. Um, even if they played Deadman high, you know, they had movement and, and slipping. You know, Atlanta has, you know, a good half-court offense. They were the number one half-court offense in the league um, and all that. So they they opted, Spo opted to go small, PJ at the five, switch, help, recover, swarm, all that stuff. And I, I'm wondering, Frankie, you know, against Philly, I don't think they can do that unless they can. I mean, do you, do you think that they just may go, fuck it, we're switching, we're sending help, we're rotating, we're just flying all over the place, and PJ is the backup five? Um, I th- I don't know because you kind of want to bait them into playing DeAndre Jordan. Yeah. And, like, you know, they, they Doc kind of stumbled upon Paul Reed at the five, and that, that's been great minutes for them as their backup. But he's also like been really hesitant to commit to it, which just shows why he's such a shitty coach. Uh, hashtag not my top fifteen. Uh, but he he's if you do that, then I'm afraid he, he's going to play his better lineups by accident. And he's he's already do went back to the bad habit of not staggering his pl- uh, players. He's not there's times where he doesn't play Maxi and Harden to get oh, oh it doesn't have one of them on the court uh at a time just stupid but you know like i i think spo is just su- has so many more answers like like i think deadman can hold his own against jordan and jordan's not going to kill you in the post-ups he's going to get some rebounds uh get a dunk or two that's fine he, but you're going to kill him in pick and roll and effort and all that um and their their bench isn't that strong so like it depends for me honestly uh if you can bait him if you can get him to not <laughs> play those Paul Reed at the five lineups. I think I think you're you're gonna win a lot more minutes, and I think Deadman could definitely hold his own. So I, I I would try Deadman first. I I would too, and I just think that the wear and tear on PJ is kind of something. And that's Caleb, old. huh? And Caleb, yeah, Cause and he, Caleb. Because the they, success of a lot of those line, those small. Sorry to cut you off. No, no, the go. success of a lot of those lineups comes with them uh, not playing three guard lineups, like you said. It was Caleb, Jimmy, PJ as the front court and they have a little size and juice. And then you, you can play Max and, and Gabe or Tyler and, and not have to worry about it as much. Cause they're, they're all, you know, besides Tyler and Duncan, they're all strong and tough defenders. Even Duncan gives you a little size backcourt. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, if you play Gabe Duncan or Tyler Duncan, or, you know, you, you have, I mean, Gabe is obviously a good defender and Tyler and, and Duncan gives you a little size. So, yeah. Um, and then you got PJ in the post, you know. Yeah, and I I loved how they just said fuck it. If you're gonna if Atlanta's gonna switch, you know, we're just gonna put Trey under the basket, which they did in Game Four, and then Atlanta just totally did not do that again. Uh, you know what was funny? You know what that reminded me of? Uh, it was the 2012 Finals when when uh, Scott Brooks was like, "Let me, you know what? They're gonna guard Perkins with Shane Battier. Let me po- post up Perk." And I was like, "Oh my god, you better hit this fucking shit, PJ, please." That's so funny, man. Oh my god. Chad's asking me Duncan stay next season. I don't know, man. That's 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 we're we're in the we're in the middle of a playoff run. Uh we'll figure this out in the off season. Um we are right now it's winning time, baby. Uh Chad asked a good question. Yeah. Can Keith get any minutes in any matchup? No garbage. I thought last night would have been the night, especially with so PJ in foul trouble. You know, they were short. They did have to play three-guard lineups, which I think that they just want to. Miami doesn't have the guards to play three-guard lineups because when they do, two of those guards are going to be bad defenders. Mm -hmm. You know? And small. And small. And for as good and athletic as Depot is, Depot is small. And Mm -hmm. uh, and so is Gabe. As good as a defender that Gabe is, Gabe is small. These are not Kobe Bryant-sized guards. You know what I mean? So... It, it's yeah. it gets a little you know you you it gets a little scary especially when your five is PJ, you know I'm not super comfortable with that but I thought last night would have been the night I don't think Frankie that eliminates Key from getting minutes I think you know everyone's gonna have at some point you know probably a role a stint but as a consistent force I don't see it um, maybe in a buck series where they need a little bit more size and they want to play two bigs, I think they could get away with it against Milwaukee, but Milwaukee's offense is really potent, and I just think you'd want to downsize and switch against their shooters, but we'll we'll see. Where, where are you with that? I I agree. The Bucks matchup is the biggest one that I would see it because um, they actually have a center that can post up, 
Yes. And and Lopez and Lopez will try to take advantage of uh we saw it. Defender. Yeah, we saw we saw it way too much. So that that might be a matchup you you play a little bit bigger. But if but they'll still be able to manipulate like they'll be able to get something switched because Miami's still gonna switch stuff. Yeah, yeah. So no, and, and and even if you play Keith, like Keith can play with PJ, he can play with Bam. And him, like, you're, his you're minutes not, at the five have been bad this year. I I don't know what you make of that, but no, no. But I mean, like he can play because if if you're gonna have, uh, if you're gonna have him in, you're gonna pro- probably be playing Bam or PJ. And I I think a lot of his minutes came in, uh, you know, when he was still kind of trying to find his footing mm-hmm. at the five. Like he, he early on in the season when he had, was playing really well before the injury, with dead it was a lot of it at the four. And I, th- I think when he came back, they were really trying that because you know Deadman was kind of a hit or miss uh, with the back injury, mostly miss. Uh, but you know, like I, I think that's something they might be able to try again. Like uh, I think with PJ and, and especially Caleb, I think Caleb's the the biggest um, X factor with the injury because I I I mean honestly, if you saw how much he was playing for them at the end of the season and then like how little like he had practice, he had DMPs this series or like two like garbage time minutes only like he was heavily involved in the rotation uh so i i think they they uh they should dust off keith and see what they can do he just and we talked about it just caleb not looking the same has ever since the achilles thing has worried me a little bit i don't know how that's going to play out but i did think that was a good question you know we'll see about keith you know, like I said, you know, I even think Yurt might get a chance at some point. You know, you never know. And and then you injuries so? ha- uh, injuries happen, man. I don't think so. I think they'd rather go extra small than Yurt. I think Yurt's like everyone's hurt kind of yeah, <laughs> emergency. Yeah. I don't think that, he's that, that's he's true. That's enough. a good point. Um, but you know, we'll see. We'll see with that. Uh, I I think those are the two big takeaways for me. You know, throughout the the, the first round of the playoffs is the emergence of Oladipo. And kind of where he can fit in on the team. I still don't. I still have questions about how they're going to work that. I think Smo will do it for sure. And we talked mm-hmm. about all the stuff that Oladipo does well. I think you know theoretically, if you can go Butler, Lowry, Oladipo, Struess, or uh, PJ Bam, you know that's really potent, right? You get a lot. I know that that squeezes Tyler out. Um, I just think that you know if if you're if you're playing Depot Lowry. I don't. I'd rather go Max and Tyler unless Tyler's like playing an incredible game. So you can really go th- that lineup, which has a lot of shooting, um, you know, enough shooting, I should say, around your three guys, and and you can really put a nasty defense. I mean, you can even go Lowry, Jimmy, uh, Depot, uh, PJ Bam, and oh, yeah. switch everything, you know, yeah, kind of toward defense. So. We'll see how that works. You like that? I, I don't think we've really seen that. No, we haven't. We haven't been able to because every time when since, when Depot was healthy, every well was available, everyone else was in and out of the lineup. So we never really got to see. You it. know what this is, and, Frankie? This is a Mike Miller the first the first year we never got to see like the Miller UD LeBron yeah. Bosch Wade lineup until the end. Oh my god! Until the Bulls and they series. were like all like wa- like <laughs> limping. UD was like. Take, getting shots before every game and shit to handle the pain. Well, UD came because it was UD that got hurt that year. Man, UD, yeah, UD he was, played like thirteen games and then got hurt in Memphis. Got hurt. It was never the same. Yeah, oh, I, God, that kills me. So mad, still mad about that. Um, Hayden Hayden CB three says that was Cody Martin. Caleb is on vacation somewhere recovering. I like what Marco I was, said. He said, uh, "Well, two things: is broke Mickey Harrison going to give me a t-shirt Monday or what?" I got a towel yesterday. <laughs> Uh, so, so did other people that I'm not going to say names, uh, other people got towels too. Um, but yeah, I got a towel. I didn't get a t-shirt. Uh, hopefully Mickey fucking wises up for Monday. He doesn't fuck around. All the other thing that he said was suppose extended, expanded Jimmy's minutes as opposed to putting Caleb in. Jimmy's the only guy whose minutes have gone up in the playoffs. Um, I think that that's going to change eventually. I think Bam's minutes are going to go up. They might be careful with Kyle because of that, because of the injury. So I'm sure that when push comes to shove and he feels fine, they'll they'll kind of bump up that a little bit. But they have a lot of guards. They have a surplus of really good guards. So I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah. Uh, Heatside asked a good question. At this point, would you rather have Gabe or Kyle for one defensive possession down the stretch? Kyle, just because he sniffs out plays quicker. Like, so if they're going to run an action, Kyle's going to know 
right the formation and, and he's gonna it was all out like Dwayne like even though Dwayne yeah. at the end was not like the best defender in the world like Dwayne's like okay for this last possession thinks- I can give you 150 percent and I'm gonna know exactly what they're gonna run and I think that that's why I'd want it um it also for me it's, on the it's personnel yeah, yeah it's all matchup for me if it's like a speedy guard or something like that I want Gabe on him but if it's like size you know like they you know, if like if it, if it, if the say you're basically Maxie saying Maxi, Gabe, anybody else, t- Kyle. Yeah, basically. Like <laughs> I don't want I don't want Gabe guarding Drew. I'm not on a I'm not worried game. about Maxi. Man. Maxi hasn't played well for like two games, two or three games. Like Maxi had the really good first like two games, and then he's been like pretty bad ever since. And I'm just I think people overreacted. You know, sometimes guys. And you know what's funny? Nobody ever re- oh, nobody reacted this way to to Tyler. Right, Tyler had really good game in the Eastern Conference Finals, and everybody was like, "Yeah, that guy sucks." And uh, and then Maxi does a couple oh, nice boy. things in the first round series against a fucking decimatedly injured Raptors team, and it's like, "Oh, it's more Maxi! Look, here he comes! Here he comes!" So <laughs> I don't fucking like Maxi. The media's made me hate Max. I hate the Sixers. I just fucking hate them. I despise them. Can we talk about Tyler? I don't even know how to talk about Tyler, bro. He's just been ass. He. Did you know this is the fourth straight playoff series he was a negative player in? But he had a negative plus minus. He he had a negative plus minus in the Boston series. Hmm. Really? Like he, I was I'm I'm very like I know part of it early on in the the series was very much, uh I don't I don't know if it was like nerves or something. He looked he just looked out of sorts. It's hard to be a negative in that Boston series. Everybody was plus. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was. It was like just barely. It was like well, you know why? Four. Because it was th- th- that series was weird because Boston was blowing them out in wins and Miami was eking by in their wins. Yeah. Miami would win well, single that- digits and Boston would fucking blow the doors open. Yeah, he had he had like one real bad game, but even in, in the positive games, he was like plus five. Like that was like his his plus. But th- it was really concerning how he just couldn't really get to his spots against Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, not really a good defensive team, and he couldn't get to his spots. Atlanta, not the defensive the juggernaut you would think. And it's just gonna get harder, like as the as the playoffs go on. Like, I'm not worried. I'm, about I, him. I was kind of concerned about him. I think he'll figure it out. Like he's he's a good player. Like I'm not worried about him. You know, again, it's not like Atlanta did anything special. You know, exactly. But that's the thing. He couldn't get by anybody. And like the shot, like the shot, you know, the shot will start falling. Hopefully, um, if it, if the shot, if the Heat keeps shooting this bad, they're not winning anything. They have to start shooting better. Um, I'm not I worried about the shot. I almost like them in like rock fights. Yeah, because Miami, if Miami can play a rock fight, and they can score ten points really, really fast. You know what annoyed me about this fucking series too is that uh, you know they they collapse in game three, obviously, but. Game two was a close fucking th- game to the end. They they went on a, sh- a run at the end and pulled away. Yeah, but it didn't end in in a three point game. Uh, you know they say they can't close. They fucking closed the shit out of game two. No, yeah, that was Jimmy run. That was Jimmy too. Yeah. By the way, the guy who it was Jimmy steal, Jimmy jumper, Jimmy get to the rim, Jimmy free throws. I I I think that that game four, I end. I think he they know what the mistakes that they made. I thought game the. Three. The game three. I keep getting the fucking games confused. Um, <laughs> the possession that I thought was egregious wasn't the last one. It was the one before that where they dribbled the ball out and there was a six yeah. or seven second difference. You can't do that with that much time. I think you just got to yeah. run your offense. You know, when you're inbounding the ball with like five or four seconds or whatever it was, that's hard to run a set. You know what I mean? That's really just get your guy and let him try Don't to get to a spot. tell Minnesota that. <laughs> Why? Did, did you not see the play they ran last night? I was at the game. I, I couldn't. Oh, my God. They ran a, a game-tying three play for Anthony Edwards. Beautiful set. Yeah, but, like, Miami's best player, like, doesn't shoot threes like that. So You can still run a set with four seconds is I'm, my point. I'm just saying, that, yeah, you can. But I, I don't and it was the tie. It was, they were down one. They didn't even need a three. They had the whole court, and they could have ran something. It, I, I, I'm not using Spo that. Spo doesn't excuse. do that. And I'm not going to – you know, it's just <laughs> – they do it sometimes. I mean, like the like the Chris Bosch three at the top of the key was like the Spo special. You know what I mean? I just... terrible pass by Dwayne. <laughs> oh, which one? The 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 Blazer one? 
Yeah, the blazer. No, I'm not one. even thinking oh of the blazer God. one because that wasn't the play. The play was for Dwayne. I'm thinking of yeah. the that was a terrible pass by Dwayne. I'm thinking of just the one that would they ran for Bosch in Boston, and they, oh, yeah, they yeah, ran yeah. it all the time. But that the the out of timeout play. Um, yeah, they start. They ran. They showed that play in like the first preseason game. One of the first preseason games. I was like, why are they showing this? And they're gonna keep running this. Every, it worked every time. They got a great look every time. Yeah, because you either stay with LeBron on the roll, or you let Chris Bosh, who was at the time like a thirty-two percent three-point shooter, and you you know you just one or the other. You know what I mean? That used to be a yeah. good three-point. Thirty-three percent used to be a good three-point percentage. Yeah, I know, right? Especially for a big, that used to be great. I think Quentin Richardson shot thirty-five percent his year that he was here, and we were like, "Q Rich." <laughs> I love Q Rich. Shooter, shooter, Q Rich. Hold on, I'll check up. I'll check uh, Quentin Richardson. That's I'm one. already, I already got it. What, what, what did you shoot his year in Miami? No, he shot thirty-nine percent. Let's point go, Q. Breaking news. <laughs> Breaking news. Two thousand nine. That's my. Fa- you know, that's my favorite Heat team. That was one of my favorites. That's my favorite Heat team of all time. I don't know why. I just had. I've never loved basketball more. Um, I just had fun. I don't know. So yeah, man. I don't know. I I feel good. Uh, obviously, you know, Atlanta stinks, but you know, you close the series in five. You know, you're the second team to punch your ticket into round two. Um, you know, it's just good. Every time, listen, guys. Never, you know, never take winning a playoff series for granted. Dallas hasn't won a playoff series since 2011. And it's not like they've had dog shit teams there. You know what I mean? It's just hard. And I know they're in the West, but you know, a lot of teams, they don't win playoff. I mean, look at Minnesota, right? Fighting for their fucking life. So, you know, these moments are fun. You know, enjoy them. Celebrate. Talk your shit on Twitter. You know, because you never know. Listen, we had a fucking basketball season nearly canceled a year that they were good. You know, like we never, you never know. You never know. So enjoy, you know, drink, laugh. You know, talk shit, po- commit post, all that good <laughs> stuff. Fuck the Bulls, man. Everybody's telling me the Bulls. Get, of course the Bulls are getting decimated. They suck. He, oh, DeMar had one good fucking playoff game, and DeMar Twitter was like, coming up. Get the fuck out of here, DeMar. Man. That guy's, I told you. I know how this ends. DeMar has zero points right now. Oh, wow, Frankie. Really? You don't say. He's taking one shot, though. I mean... <laughs> This is the defrozen thing, man. It's a it's a reason. I do I don't oh, trust he had 41 that. in that win. I didn't even see that. He had 41 in one game. Who would the that's X like, Factor be that's in like the double Trey Young had? There will be no Sixer series because the Raptors are gonna win in seven. I don't even know what an X Factor means. What what when people say the X Factor, what do, what does it mean, Frankie? <laughs> is it mean like the factor that people aren't talking about enough? No, it's more like the uh, wild card, the 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 one yeah, that, you're, that the, if it goes your way, yeah. Every X factor for Miami is which of the white boys is going to shoot really well. That's really well, it's it. mostly like like somebody. It's like the hot or cold guy. The that he can either be really good or he can kill you. Any of the white and, boys, yeah. Any of the tres leches, yeah. Essentially, like if like, the, if the tres leches ball, you're fucked. Yeah. It's been it's, a while since, like, because Max didn't even have Max had uh, game three. He was really good that game. Max shooting last night too, though. No, no, but I mean, like, offensively, he hasn't had like one of those games yet. Like he had the game. He had one game. Uh, Duncan had game one, and then Tyler. Tyler's been like hit. Like he had a couple. He had, he had a good game last night. I'll, I'll give Tyler credit for that. You know what? Do you know what's interesting about Duncan <laughs> versus Max? What? Krab said uh, X factor equals it could go either way. Marco said stat I saw today was DeMar DeRozan has the worst plus minus in NBA playoff history. No shit. That's what I've been. I watched that man for years. I know how this ends. Um, I, that I would guy, get so mad. I was it. I was always a, a Lowry fan and I was like, why the fuck are they calling DeMar the best player on this? Oh, you too. Team? Yeah. Yeah, that was my thing. I was like, what's going on here? And then DeMar would so Kyle Kyle always had injuries in the playoffs. He had a hand thing. I think he had a hand thing two years in a row in the Miami series that year and then in another in the year after. I think he's only Kyle really the, Huh? Kyle was the only one that scared me in that fucking Miami series. He fucking that game uh two. No, Valanciunas was scary. No, no, but like out of those two, like, I, DeMar like I he doesn't fucking kill you. He gives you he's gonna score, but it's like, all right, he's gonna fucking score twenty points on ten for twenty. And get scored on. 
It's just the other yeah. thing with Demar. And Kyle's gonna create. He's gonna he's gonna bend the defense and shit. Yeah. Somebody says Pres- Precious Siakam have been blowing past and beat with ease. Bam would have an open lane all day when he decided. Yeah, Bam's never gonna just take the ball and dribble like that. You should, this, you should stop stop asking him to do shit he's never done. I, I, I'm a little annoyed with fans when they're just like, I need Bam to do this. I go, bro, we all want Bam to do stuff, but he doesn't do it. So, oh, well. It's, it's, you're asking him to be a different person. Uh, the He's, thing I was going to say to The thing about Bam, let, the, real quick before that. Yeah. The thing about Bam, guys, he's not a great ball handler. Like, you can't compare him to Siakam. Siakam is a much better ball handler. He's, yes. much, he's much stronger with the ball. The thing about Bam, when he tries to dribble, he tries to do a move, he dribbles it off his foot, he loses it, he goes out of bounds, and he gets frustrated because those are turnovers. Those are... Live ball turn the those are dead ball turnovers and the the other team uh is get gets the ball now. Sometimes it's, they're live ball turnovers. Yeah, sometimes they are live ball turnovers, but most of the time he's dribbling he out gets of bounds. stripped a lot. Yeah, he does not like if they send help, if he doesn't have a straight line, it's it's a one on one, he's not gonna make the play. He's not good enough. They have not they have he hasn't had a chance to develop that. He's never been asked to do that with he needs with to ball. be one dribble, get to the basket. Yeah, he needs one and hard that, dribble and, like Amari Stoudemire. And, and yeah, exactly. And that's why I hate doing the DHOs because he's yeah he's he's telling him to do it from twenty four feet out. I don't hate the DHOs because they he gets to slipping and it kind of brings us back to the point I was trying to make earlier about the differences between Max and Duncan. And you saw it in that game. There was so much more movement. The problem with Duncan is that Duncan's not hitting shots. Theoretically, if Duncan was hitting the same amount of shots that Max does, Duncan does so much more for your offense because when when they run something. And if they send them, if a man steps up on the shooter, Bam knows to slip and he has so much space because Miami lo- Miami has loads up on the strong side. He slips. He's now behind the defense and that weak side man in the corner, whether it's PJ's man or Gabe's man or whoever, if, and if it's Gabe's man, that's a small rotating over. Duncan is so good at that pass. Max does not have that. Duncan sees it immediately and he's really good at it. And that's the difference between him and Max is athletic. Max can run with guards on the fast break. Max on the fast break isn't popping out for three. Max is running to the rim. Max can finish. Yeah. Max has more of a handle than Duncan. So they give different things. But Duncan's game, when he, you know, it's just if Duncan's hitting shots, and again, that's a huge if at this point at times, their offense looks incredible incredible because the yeah. because of the way that he can play make when he and he sees things happen quick max is so yeah. good as an athlete and max gets hot so fast because max can make plays in transition he's more athletic he makes plays at the rim which duncan just doesn't so stuff like that and there's just different kinds of players and they're both really good in their own way but you know it's just like why like we're always like come on dunk like we they need you because he unlocks a part of them that is just so good. But Max has been terrific, especially uh, such an improved defender. In during the season, you don't see that a lot. Usually guys come back in the offseason. He's gotten better in season. Um and 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 huge for him. Last no, thing it's before- been it's it's kind of helped turn it around because like he's you mentioned, he's he has a little bit more variety to offer than Duncan. Like a, when Duncan's not hitting shots, uh he's not attacking the rim. He's not getting out in transition, getting layups, not making, getting a lot of stops or anything like that. Uh, and Max is a bigger body He's in, in strength and, and, and size, not, not in height, but he can play up a lot better than Duncan can. He doesn't foul as much as Duncan can uh, or does. And he just gives you, you have a little bit more variety, but like he's like Duncan is more of a flamethrower for sure. But you know, Duncan's not going on 10-0 runs and three to, no. and scoring three different ways. He's gonna he's going on a 12-0 run, uh, all all threes on DHOs or off a curl or in transition. I've had three of these already. This this damn this is the damn episode. Uh, last thing before game. we go, two things. Uh, Hayden CB3 says Bam did that shit against Boston and never again. No, what Bam did against Boston was they Boston had to go so small. And what Miami realized was if we run a Dragic, Bam, pick and roll, you're so small that your help from the corner, because if Grant Williams is in, because they were going so fucking small, and Grant Williams, or or because Tice got played off the court, because Tice in a drop was just getting fucking shredded by Duncan and by by Tyler and by, by Gogi 
It's just by everybody. Just everybody was fucking torching Daniel Tyson a drop. So when they went smaller, Bam would slip off the handoff or the screen. Dragic was getting so much pressure at the rim that Goran was uh, not not a lob threat. Goran was a fucking scoring threat. Yeah. And he was so good that series. Even the games that they lost, Gogi was like the one keeping them in the game. Like he would score like they're only fucking 15 points in a quarter at times, right? So when you have that much pressure with the guard as a scorer, Bam is able to slip, get behind the defense, and if you get him the ball, you're fucked because the Celtics' help from the corners is small. It was Kemba. It was, you know, Jalen was out of the play, right? Because Jimmy's shifting unless they leave Jimmy open, and we saw at the end of that game when Jalen aborts and leaves Jimmy, that short roll pass to Jimmy dump off dunk, right? Or Jimmy open in the corner, hit that big three, in game one. So stuff like that happened. So that wasn't a bam being aggressive thing. Although he did have some takeover moments at the end of game six. A lot of that was the scoring pressure of Goran Dragic, you know, what he did to the Boston defense and how them and the way that their coverage has worked and their size played into bam's advantage, which they can do again. Right. I know that yeah. Rob Williams is now the helper, which it's different. And that is much, much bigger size. But Miami can get him moving in actions because if Rob if Rob's gonna guard Max in a corner, well, what do you do? You just flip that into a handoff, and Boston's gonna switch it. But now you get Rob out of the corner, and then you can run other stuff. And then Miami can do their <laughs> empty corner stuff. So we'll see. Um, last thing. Ro- oh, sorry, real quick. Uh, Robert Williams' nickname on one of his nicknames on Basketball Reference is Boo Butt. Boo butt, boo so butt. much better than Time Lord. We should just call him Boo butt. Whole series. I'm calling him Boo butt all boo series. Butt. Boo butt. Um, Cab, uh, Cab and Jay says, and he at some point this playoffs will have to use a death squadron lineup of Jimmy Lowry, Depot, Hero, and Adebayo. Um, that's a little small. We talked about that earlier. I just wanted to give a shout out because uh, because Cab donated some bits to 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 stream. So you know how to appreciate your support. Um, show. Sure. I don't that's a little small. I think they'll go to it at some point. I'm curious as to how it looks. I don't know how they survive on defense and they're very huntable because they're just they're just really small. There's three guards, Jimmy and Bam. There's a lot of pressure on Jimmy and Bam and Lowry to hold up their end of the defense because Lowry's gonna have to guard a forward somewhere there. I think you could do it against some teams. I actually think some Bucks lineups you can do it against when Lopez is off the floor and if it's like Portis, right? Or or um or whoever if, if Lopez is not there. But yeah, we'll see. I even think some Boston lineups too. Oh, Boston for like, sure. The problem with Boston is that guys like Tatum, you know, can do a better job of hunting smaller matchups, you know, and and, and he'll get them in positions where I think would be a little more troublesome. You know, I, I'm always scared, Frankie, of like power wings. I'm not scared of guards hunting. I'm scared of power wings hunting. I the thing with Tatum is like he's not a, a he's still not extremely great at finishing or um, playmaker for that matter. Like he, that's what I mean. Like I, if I send help at him, he he can make the plays. He can make simple reads. But like I'm making him, if I, I'm gonna make him make that weak side skip, like I'm making him make that difficult pass. He's got to make a jump pass and he's got to put it in the pocket. Otherwise, we're gonna close out. And and if you you fumble that pass, you're not getting that shot up. I'm so interested in a Miami Boston series, and I just think Miami's gonna have to run every time they can to get enough offense going. And I think Boston's I'm gonna not- have to do the same. I think Boston, like, I think I really like our matchup with Boston. I don't know why. I don't, mostly because I'm just scared of teams that switch. But I also like that there's just guys that Jimmy can pick on, and that's just always going to be comfortable offense for you. I just love beating beating Marcus Smart. I always love beating Marcus Smart. Always good. Like, guys, thank you so much for coming. Um, I, you know, I thought today would be more celebratory. I, even I did the Pepas Agua Palaseca. Uh, on the on the little Chiron under the screen, uh, but it was an it was an analysis day. You know, hangover time is for the Selly, and uh, we are doing uh, analysis and shit over here on Miami Heapy. Thank you guys for joining our coverage. Um, I'm really proud of what we do. I think we do it as good as anybody, and I love our team and the dedication. What Brass put together last night was fucking phenomenal i saw one of the youtube comments said he's the most talented white man they've ever seen i don't want to get dmca'd but you know you know the song um we have a great time we appreciate our audience we love you guys 
uh, will likely be off, barring we'll probably pod on Sunday uh, with a preview for Monday because the, the, the games. I don't want to get DMC at Frankie. Please don't do that. Um, <laughs> I'm really scared. I don't want, I don't want to get shut down. I, I like our monetization. Uh, Mark, uh, Marco's throwing me off because he says I don't live in Dallas. I thought you did for some reason. Um, did that conversation was was that on air? No. <laughs> oh, you just did. Okay, I was like, did I? Did we do? That? Did we do that on air? I don't remember. <laughs> so, kind of the schedule for the week is going to be, we're pretty much going to be off until Sunday. So if if Philly wins tomorrow, I think we'll pod Sunday for the Wrapped for the preview. Um, if Philly loses on Thursday, then they would play a game seven on Saturday. I guess we would also pod. So yeah, Sunday is a preview pod day. So we're off until Sunday. Um, give us a nice good break. Hope you guys enjoy. We'll be back with a preview pod. And then of course I want to do every start of a new series. I want to do a one hour weird off pregame show. Um, so we'll have that. We might have a mixed bag. We're in needle of the groove at some point as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, and uh, team five, baby. We're white. Eden 5, let's go.